Hey everyone, I want you to imagine that you were sitting in the middle of your AP Lang class and that you just finished reading a non-fiction selection. Your teacher, let's call him Mr. Schneckloth, walks up to you and points out a particular section of the reading. Then he asks you the dreaded question that you were hoping he'd ask anybody else on the planet. What is the rhetorical effect of this section of the text? You sit there, your lip starts to quiver, you can't speak, you get choked up, and you cry because you just don't know. Okay, so not only did I tell this story to give a shout out to Mr. Schneckloth and his AP Lang class, but I also told it because if you are the type of person who doesn't want to have to answer the dreaded rhetorical effect question, I need you to know that you're not alone. Today though, I can make it so that you never have to hide from that pesky question again. I have some really quick tips to help you understand what the rhetorical effect of anything is. A few years ago, I made a video about annotating your readings by considering parts of the classical argument structure. It looked like this, and it is linked in the description down below. Although I used to teach this way, and it was somewhat effective with helping my students understand what the rhetorical effect is of something, some of my students continued to struggle because they found this particular type of annotation strategy a little bit nebulous. So I went back to the drawing board and realized that I could actually concentrate the rhetorical effect of just about anything into five specific questions. And these five specific questions, if you know how to read for them, will answer almost any multiple choice question on your AP Lang exam. Let me show you these questions and then we're going to see their use in action. Here they are. If you'd like a document with these questions on it, you can find one in the description below this video. It's linked right under the Garden of English's exam prep study materials. If you didn't know, our exam prep guide includes all that you need to study for your AP Lang exam so you can score well in your class and on test day. The guide includes videos that cover all of the content that you need to know for the course, practice multiple choice questions for every unit of the course and exam description, two full practice exams, multiple choice rationales, self-scoring rubrics and self-score sheets, sample essays and scoring commentary so you can know exactly why certain essays score like they do on exam day, and other practice materials that are even aligned with the time frames of the AP US History units. You can sign up for a free trial and also get video guides for some of my AP Lang YouTube videos. Free, right? Inconceivable! Okay, back to the action. To model what I'm talking about when I bring up the rhetorical effect questions, I'm going to rely on the Cesar Chavez reading called He Showed Us the Way. It's already included on the free video worksheet that I have in the description, and this excerpt is actually what was used on the 2015 AP Lang exam. In my past annotation videos, I already modeled how to section off the text and how to label those sections with methods of development down the left hand side of the page. If you need a refresher, you can feel free to find those videos also linked right down below. Now, assuming you've read the piece and have already reviewed the other annotation protocol, let's focus on the first section of that reading that I have marked off. It's about to show up right on your screen. Okay, let's consider this section and see how many of the questions from the five that I provided that I can answer. So, based on this section, what can I know about the speaker's background, values, or beliefs? Well, I can infer that Chavez values and believes in the peaceful message and example of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I can also understand that he's inspired to commemorate such on the 10th anniversary of Dr. King's death. I can infer that Chavez's audience of oppressed farm workers most likely esteemed Dr. King as well, and they should be inspired by the life that he chose to live. And I can realize that Chavez views Dr. King's life of nonviolent protest as one that supports how effective nonviolent protests can be. In all of these answers, I was able to relate the text to the author's values and beliefs, the audience's backgrounds and beliefs, an intended emotional response that the audience should have in response to this section of text, what inspired Chavez to discuss what he is at the current time, and how the section of text relates to Chavez's overarching argument. Wow. Whoa, that's a lot. And I can just record these observations in the right hand margin as I've exemplified in red on my model document that's linked up right below the like button and the subscribe button and the channel member button and the super thanks button and the merch link so you can grab cool hoodies that look like this. Now, when you combine these observations with the other annotations that I already taught about in the other videos, they can be easily translated into sentences that can be used as the basis for topic sentences for any body paragraphs that you'd like to write in a rhetorical analysis essay about whatever reading selection you're actually covering. About to pop up on your screen is a template that you can fill in. It looks like this. <music> 
If I were to fill this template in, labeling my choice that focuses on my method of development of exemplification and the inferences that I already mentioned earlier in this video, here is what my sentence would look like. Chavez exemplifies an American civil rights icon in order to evoke collective feelings of awe and respect while also highlighting the power of nonviolent protest. In the document for this video, I've also included another example for the second section of the reading. You should check it out, it's in green. Then you should practice making inferential observations about the rhetorical effects of the other sections of this reading so you can practice with those questions that I've provided for you. Once you've made your observations, try writing rhetorical choice and effect sentences for the remaining sections of this text. Once you've done that, you can follow it up by watching how to translate these sentences into strong topic sentences for any rhetorical analysis essay. And you can do that by watching the video that's about to pop up on your screen.